पेंसेटाइटिस है विद सीडोसिस्ट टॉलरेटेड प्रीवियस ओजीडी प्रीवियसली इसमें एक दो चीजें ऑफ नोट हैं क्रॉनिक पेंसेटाइटिस अक्सर जब होता है पेशेंट्स को तो दे सफर विद सेवेर अन्य डायबिटीज तो वो तो ये बेटा ये कैसे तो चल रहे खैर मुझे इतनी परवाह नहीं है द मेन थिंग दे सफर इज विद सवेयर पेन सो मच सो कि दे रिक्वायर नारकोटिक एनलजीजिक्स एंड दे आर यूजली अंडर द केयर ऑफ पेन क्लिनिक्स वहाँ पे हमारे अक्सर रनिंग से रन करते हैं ना सीलिय ब्लॉक भी करते हैं लेकिन ज़्यादातर आजकल करंटली वी गिव दम एनलजीजिक या पेंसिटेक्टिव भी करते हैं तो दे रिक्वायर क्वाइट अ लॉट ऑफ पेन एज नारकोटिक्स एंड अल्कोहल का भी यूज़ होता है तो द रिक्वायरमेंट फॉर सडेशन आर एनर्जीजा इज हाई तो उसकी प्रीवियस हिस्ट्री है टॉलरेटेड ओ जी डी पोअरली इट इज़ क्वाइट कॉमन इन दैम लिस्टेड फॉर यू आर सी पी हाउ वुड यू अप्रोच दिस पेशेंट हाँ ठीक है जी हाँ यू गॉट स्टोन इन द सी बी डी ठीक है वैसे आप जो कुछ आपने कहा है ना तो मेरे एक्सप्रेशन से लगा होगा कि आई एम नॉट इम्प्रेस ना अच्छा बताए और बताए हाँ जी हाउ ऑप्टिमाइज़ द पेशेंट फॉर ई आर सी पी आदर जो प्रीवियस स्टेटेड ओ जी डी प्रीवियस स्टॉप यू हेयर कोई एक उस सेंटेंस में लाइन में कहे कि इसका मेन इशू क्या है वॉट इज द मेन प्रॉब्लम जी अच्छा ठीक है वो वो है चैलेंज क्या है मेन वॉट इज द मेन हाँ बिल्कुल एग्जैक्टली देखिए किताबी बातें छोड़ें प्रैक्टिकल प्रोसीजर जब आप करेंगे प्रैक्टिकल लाइफ में आते हैं तो यू लुक एट वॉट आर द मेन चैलेंज इज गोइंग टू बी इन दिस प्रोसीजर ठीक है जी द पेशेंट हैज गॉट नॉर्मली अक्सर सेंटर में जनरल ये क्या है प्रोपोफॉल एन एस सीजा में भी कराते हैं ई आर सी पी हम लोग यू के में नहीं करते अनलेस इट्स अ स्पेशल थिंग ना वी नॉर्मली डू इट अंडर कॉन्शियस सडेशन ई आर सी पी वहाँ पर जो होती है ना यू एस में मोर कॉमनली यूज प्रोपोफॉल एन एस सीजा यहाँ पर भी यूज़ करते हैं इस यूनियन में भी यूज़ करते हैं तो हमारे लिए ये इट्स अ स्पेशल चैलेंज बिकॉज दिस पेशेंट हैज गॉट अ हाई रिक्वायरमेंट फॉर एनर्जीजिया एंड सडेशन so he would require either anesthetic yes anesthetic mac so usko aapko special list karna hoga to now mujhe hamare course mein ye question jo apni us pe maun ne dala hai to yahan pe it might not be such a big problem dr khalid hasan ke unit mein bhi it might not be such a big problem kyunki they probably use propofol anesthesia anyway lekin for us it is because it's not our routine right to isme baki sab hoshiar baatein chhod jaye main jo baat hai wo hai चैलेंजेस फॉर एन एस डायबिटीज भी मैनेज हो जाएगा सब कुछ हो जाएगा ठीक है जी तो दैट्स वन थिंग और बाकी वो है उसकी तबीयत पहले अच्छा दूसरा केस वाइस्ट डॉक्टर खालिद हसन इज गेटिंग रेडी वी टू इज पैनल नंबर सिक्सटी ईयर ओल्ड वुमन माइट्रल बैल रिप्लेसमेंट ऑन वॉफिन एबडामिनल पेन एबडामिनल लेफ्टीज रिसेंट ठीक है माइल्ड डॉमिनल गोल्ड मेडल स्टोर है ultrasound scan page cbd 10 mm hai, which is big normal 60 mm hota hai theek hai how would you approach your cp in this patient ab isme kya challenges hai bleeding is reduced because of bleeding so warfarin pe warfarin band kar dein ha fir kya karenge heparin ke heparin se treatment ke upar wo kyun for short acting mitral valve ha ji isme do issues hai ek So we would consult cardiologist. Okay, you take it. That's good. Sir, uh, as a patient uh, wonders, Dr. Gordon can go for uh, uh, like a valve case if uh, if the metallic valve or not getting enough 
Poate ar trebui să facem o mică idee, cum 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 ar trebui să facem हां मतलब वैल सी हो जाएगा ना क्योंकि अगर एयोटिक वैल रिप्लेसमेंट हो ना तो इट्स नॉट सच अ हाई रिस्क इट विल नॉट सीज इवन अगर टिश्यू वैल ना भी हो प्रोस्थेटिक वैल भी हो ना एयोटिक तो इट डज नॉट सीज आप चार पांच दिनों के लिए इजीली एंटीकोगुलेंट स्टॉप कर सकते हैं विदाउट पुटिंग देम ऑन हेपरिन बट माइट्रल वैल रिप्लेसमेंट अगर प्रोस्थेटिक वैल हो मेटालिक वैल हो दैट विल सीज तो उसके लिए आपको हेपरिन देना जरूरी होता है पहले हम इंट्रावेनस हेपरिन इन्फ्यूजन देते थे अब लो मोलेक्युलर वेट हेपरिन भी देते हैं सपोर्ट हां और ऑन द डे ऑफ द प्रोसीजर वी स्टॉप दैट तो इसमें एक तो ये कि अगर ये मैं सिर्फ एंडोस्कोपी करता ओजीडी करता डायग्नोस्टिक भी करता और या बायोप्सी भी देता तो इट वुड हैव बीन परफेक्टली ऑलराइट इन दैट केस इट्स अ लो रिस्क प्रोसीजर इवन एंडोस्कोपिक बायोप्सीज आर ऑलराइट यू कैन स्टिल टेक देम विदाउट कॉजिंग एनी अगर इवन द पेशेंट इज ऑन वॉपरिन उसे फर्क नहीं पड़ता लेकिन इसमें कंडीशन भी हाई रिस्क है यू कांट स्टॉप द वॉपरिन एंड प्रोसीजर वो भी है तो इसमें वॉपरिन स्टॉप करके हेपरिन लो मोलेक्युलर वेट एंड देन डू द प्रोसीजर आल्सो चेक आईएनआर एज़ वेल आईएनआर तो आप चेक करेंगे ना देखें वो तो आपको चेक होगा हां नहीं एमआरसीपी तो देखें अगर स्टोन नहीं है तो फिर तो आप एमआरसीपी करेंगे ना दिस शुड नॉट बी ट्रीटेड एनी डिफरेंट देन अदर केसेस फॉर इंडिकेशन वाइज यहां पे इंडिकेशन आपके पास है ठीक है ना चले भी रहा चले भी वैसे भी हां ठीक है ये 68 ईयर ओल्ड मैन एब्नॉर्मल एलएफटीज ईयूएस शो 13 मिलीमीटर सीबीडी विद स्टोन he is on aspirin and clopidogrel for ischemic heart disease uske mai hua hai attend for the day ke crct usi waqt subah aa gaya aap wo dekh rahe hain oh ji ye to aspirin bhi kha raha hai wo bhi kha raha hai normal full blood count theek hai clotting profile theek hai inr bhi theek hai sab kuch theek hai how do you proceed quick sir wahi cardiologist ka intervention lenge yahan pe stop kar denge simple answer mujhe de kya karenge aap is patient ke sath no those who want to go for ERCP, con, raise your hand, who will do ERCP on him straight away? Correct, Haji. Yes, sir, INR. INR, normal app, no. ERCP, we will do ERCP. We stop the aspirin corporeal at least for five to seven days prior to the ERCP. That's, that's right. So you stop the clopidogrel. Aspirin is your must not be. Aspirin is okay. Clopidogrel. If he's on aspirin, you can carry out, do an ERCP. If he's on clopidogrel, you stop that. Okay. okay, thank you. Sir, same scenario. Patient has a cholangitis and sepsis at the same time. You don't have five days. What do you do? You so we will do the do the yes. we put a plastic tape in the cell that you have to You will store it. Go for it. Take the patient, plastic. just put a stand and deal with it. And then deal with it later. Deal with it. And no stitch. Sir, no. I have a question. No. Uh, like, uh, <coughs> sir, uh, if, 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 if I will just mainly go through the basics and uh, advanced techniques, I'm not going to talk about that uh, much, but we'll, uh, we'll see where we end up. So before you start ERCP, what I say is like become a pathologist means study the papilla. Don't, yeah, like when you, uh, when you get the scope down there, you see the papilla, you just want to just start uh, uh, hitting it with the uh, uh, or with the Y, don't do that. Take your time, get to the papilla, take a look at the confirm, uh, uh, confirmation of the papilla, 
trying to figure out if uh, what you are trying to do, if you are getting a billy access, you need a pathetic access, uh, what should be the angle of the patella, what should be the angle of the sphincter comb, cannula, wire, okay, I think this is the area, uh, this is the direction of the, or axis of the biduct, that's how should I should approach, and you need a minute, 30 seconds to a minute before figure, you figure that out. So after you get there, uh, just don't start uh, 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 working on that. study that, uh, look at the papilla, and uh, before you touch it, the number one thing is, uh, uh, Dr. Bakar already mentioned about that, your position. Okay. Get into the best position before you touch the papilla. There's no compromise on that. You cannot be bending like this, and the scope is like so far away from the papilla, and uh, you're not gonna get a better angle, so spend your time to get into a better position, okay? And just remember that there, every papilla is different. Take a look at it, one technique, no one technique fits all the best situations, and uh, uh, you have to uh, just take a look at the papilla and then uh, uh, go from there. Either uh, two type of uh, uh, mainly uh, uh, techniques. One is the wire guided technique. We all heard about that. I'll show you some videos the way I do it. And uh, then it's uh, like cannulation, inject, and uh, to get an idea about the papillary anatomy, and then you go with the wire. Okay. So you sometimes you get these referrals, and uh, you're going to uh, uh, get uh, uh, like when you see uh, the papilla. And you get this uh, uh, in the report, the papilla was too small to cannulate. So if, if the eye is going through that, you should be able to cannulate that. Or somebody should be able to get, do the ERCP. So that papilla, <coughs> the hole is never too small or too tight to do a ERCP. And uh, remember that, uh, uh, Getting a successful cannulation never depends on pushing harder. I'm going to take my jacket off. I'm going to put this on a chair here. We just do like this. So consider this a patella. This is a patella. If you are trying to put your arm through that, if you keep pushing it, it would never go in. You're gonna hit the wall and it's gonna keep coming back. So you have to put your hand, arm in, straighten it, get into the right axis of the papilla to really get into that papilla. So pushing a hard is not gonna work. You have to get into the right angle uh, to get in there. So it's always about the axis and always uh, about the angle. Just make sure you're not distorting. If the papilla is getting distorted, just stop, <coughs> rethink, reevaluate the situation. Okay. And uh, again, the uh, uh, same thing is like uh, uh, when you are having a trouble for the selective bile cannulation, <coughs> you always pick up and use the wheel, really, wheel of the, uh, uh, the bigger wheel to get into the uh, 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 get into the opening, get into the binder. It's just not like, don't keep pushing on the ca cannula, don't keep pushing on the wire. Okay. So, I mean, what do we use, the usually sphincter tone here? That's what you guys start with, or cannula, or what is the approach usually? Sphincter tone. I, okay, so, but there are different ways to uh, and do it, that's what I do mostly. I think uh, Dr. Mokar and uh, Dr. Saad, uh, uh, they all uh, do the same thing to start with the sphincter tone. And uh, you can, uh, uh, these are the, we will just, uh, uh, we will not talk about the needle knife. We will just talk about the standard techniques and uh, um, wire guided and uh, uh, just uh, with the uh, sphincter tone. So here, 
there's uh, different sequences, just uh, it, it, one sequence may not work for one type of papilla, and uh, then uh, there is one sequence you can develop, it may work better for you. I had this one sequence, I don't think uh, uh, that saw does the same way. I just always use the wire tape. I'll show you during the course as well. In the, vi uh, the videos I have, I'll show you that. But you can just use uh, 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 the cannula itself without a wire tape to, and then uh, just see the catheter uh, inject, then put the wire, or you can uh, see the catheter and just do wire added cannulation and then uh, really a combination of that. How do you achieve the seeding? You put the cannula, you put the sphincter in there, into the opening. If you are not really deep into the opening and you are just sitting on the surface, then uh, you're not uh, really gonna get in there. So you have to, what we call, engage the papilla, really. First, engage, engage means like you have to get in, you have to see it in. You can either use, uh, do with the, uh, without a wire tape or you can use with the wire tape. So whatever uh, works for you, whatever you get comfortable with, just use that. Okay. So now with regard to the uh, anatomy of the papilla, uh, most of the time what you are gonna get is like there is a one opening, a small common channel. And uh, bile duct is on the top, synthetic duct is on the bottom. Sometimes you will see two separate openings. So even though they are like the septum that comes all the way out, you are, uh, uh, go in, you put the wire in, you put the cannula in. What happens is, it's a two separate openings. Unlucky you, you got into a synthetic one first. And uh, then you see that there is an opening. And what that does is, more you work on that, this septum gets compressed and gets just attached, just gets stuck up there uh, to the uh, biliary opening. So every time you do that, you're gonna keep going into the pancreatic duct unless you realize that and move that septum down to get into the bile duct, okay? I'll, I, I have a, uh, a diagram of that, I'll show that in, uh, as well. And this sometimes could be a very challenging, the long one. Uh, the long common channel. And especially if there are uh, a lot of uh, uh, pores on that, I'll show you those uh, uh, different examples of those as well. So these are uh, pretty straightforward. Actually those fixed papilla are the easiest ones. The medium size fixed papilla, they usually are the easiest ones. They are usually uh, straight shot. If you are in the right position, you just gotta make sure you're, uh, you're going into the bile duct. What I say is like, uh, this is gonna be probably the best position to cannulate the bile duct. You put the sphincter cone right here, and the bile duct goes, it looks like it's going up that way. If you have to go into the pancreas, what I would do is, I will move the small V towards me. What that would do is that papilla from here will become like right here. And this would be the then your direction of the pancreatic part. So just by a little bit maneuvers with the scope, uh, with the wheels, then can get you in a really good position to get into the desired duct. So what are the reasons for failed cannulation? Uh, one, these are the different ones that I put on there. One is the sharp tape papilla up and over. I'll give you examples of those. Uh, then a uh, few times, it's a biliary and pancreatic orifice could be what we call a upside down. Uh, pancreatic orifice opens upwards, biliary downwards. You will find some cases. I don't know how often you had that, but probably after uh, like uh, maybe one, two percent, not more than that. Yeah. And uh, then separate openings, just remember that. There could be two separate openings uh, for pancreas and uh, bile duct. And then we all know about the uh, periampillary diverticle. So who uh, is gonna tell me what is Sharpe uh, uh, papilla? Uh, what does Sharpe mean? Sharpe 
Arpe is a Chinese dog. Like with those lot of folds, skin folds, it's just like looking like a towel there. So you can see that right there. And there's so many folds on there. And uh, this is probably uh, maybe one of the difficult uh, papillas. And just because you have to straighten the papilla. Here sometimes, uh, this is uh, probably a good papilla for a double wire uh, technique what we were talking about earlier. But uh, this is, uh, uh, that's, uh, there are so many folds in, uh, uh, of the duodenal folds, so that makes it a really very sloppy papilla, and that makes it difficult. And then, then there is a, an other example, up and over. So let me show you. I guess this is a better. Right here, what up is, is like you go up, and then you get over up. You have to get over a hump and to get into the bilateral. So if your sphincter is going like this, it's already making an angle. And if you keep uh, 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 maintaining that angle, you're always going to be hitting this wall. Okay? So it would never get in there. So for the up and uh, over papilla, if you can, uh, if you find that out by injecting, uh, you go in there, you pull the scope back. Like your scope is in that position, you just pull it back. What that does is, because scope is in this position right now, if you pull it back, that kind of straightens it, and that gets you over the hump. And other option could be, instead of using a sphincter tone, you can use a straight cannula. That would help you much better with this up and over. And I have tried that multiple times. If I know it's up and over, I just take the sphincter tone on, pour a cannula, and that just straightens very easily as compared to the sphincter tone, because that angle is different. So this is an example of a over. You see that? Right here? Synthetic orifice is right here. And this is a wire going wire has to take that angle. So this is a real uh, uh, image uh, showing you that. So next one, uh, I'll uh, just turn the video on in a second. With regard to scopes, uh, uh, you know that the, yeah, obviously the EGD or OGD regular scope has a camera in the front. You're uh, like, uh, it's just like you're looking at the, uh, at the street and walking. So that's what it is. With regard to ERCP scope, if you, if you have a look at my finger, just consider the nail is the camera. Okay, the camera is looking upward and finger going forward. So it's, you are looking up and moving forward. So every time you have to like get to the pylorus, you have to put the pylorus at the bottom to get into that. Because if you are looking at the pylorus, you are hitting that like with this. So the camera has to go up for scope to get into the pylorus. So that is the ERCP scope. I don't think uh, you guys do EUFs, but the EUFs is uh, in the middle, that scope. So you are looking where the wall and the ceiling, they are connected. So that's at 45 angle. So these are the different differences in the cameras in those scopes. Okay. So this is, a, we, we are in the stomach. I, I just uh, I made this video. I'm in the stomach. You see that? Getting to the pylorus, and it's all what we say uh, is uh, always like about uh, endoscopy. It's never about pushing; it's advancing the scope, and pushing is against the resistance. Advancing is just gently moving in and not having any resistance. So with endoscopy, it's you always advance the scope, not really push the scope. Okay, that would be the. So here you saw that, getting to the pylorus. Right there is at the bottom. And as soon as I see, then I see that there, and then I put it at the bottom right there to get into the uh, duodenal bulb. After you get into the duodenal bulb, we're gonna see that. And, uh, you're, you guys are gonna do, uh, do that as well. Everybody that does that, especially the fellows, 
they just don't want to see anything. They want to get to the perfect life. Okay, so it doesn't matter. And they do have these uh, really bad dancing movements to get to it. Okay, so just be slow. Take your time. You get into the Warner Ball. If you really just same way as with the EUS though, get into the Warner Ball. Inflate a little bit. That's okay. Try to find what is the exit or what is the lining to get into the second ball. Okay. So that's what I'm gonna do here right now. You see that? Just gently moving the scope. And if I even though I'm keeping that at the bottom, the opening, but I'm still gently moving in. So right now, I'll stop here. You can now uh, uh, see that likely this is the ampulla, right? Do you see anything else? Yeah, yeah. Meditation. Meditation up. A anything else you see? Like we see the major papilla right there. There. Anything else? I'm, these are the things I don't uh, like. Uh, it's the ones I'm telling you, I'm taking those off the list so you don't have to say those. Minor, 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 that's always the long position before you get into the second part. Oh, sorry. You mentioned ulcer. Yeah. Oh, who did that? Yeah. I didn't even. Yeah. 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 So, so you have to be, you know. That's in fact night reflecting. <laughs> you have to be very careful yeah. because ulcer is like, you know, here I'll have to think very hard, where would I call this? Uh, no, I didn't even hear that. Yeah. So, so no, that's I heard, so that's why I stopped. I said, you need to be very careful when you're thinking. You don't have to it. The One of the things that we learned very early, I don't know if they still do it or not, but they forced in England on all exams, they had a, an option of don't know. And if yeah. you would not fill in the don't know in a question, that was, because it was negative marking, it would be taken as a negative mark. So they, in, they, they forced you to say don't know. And it's so important in almost all fields, but in our fields, very important. I don't know what it is. Okay. And it saves you from a lot of issues. So, you know, now we, because we're becoming senior, we feel we can't say we don't know. Why? Not, I, uh, yeah, agreed. Not, not everybody, everybody knows everything, and you and don't not, not have everybody to know can everything. Know everything. And not anybody, everybody and Not can. everybody has to know it. Has to know it. This is a Pakistani system. Whereby, because I've got, I'm Dr. Saad Niyaz, so I have to know everything. Why? Why? There's a lot of things I don't know. So you see that, uh, and then okay, now. So we were there. You see that I'm going there. It doesn't take time. It just adds few seconds. So take your time, and what I say is like, uh, make endoscopy look elegant, make it look beautiful, make it like, it shouldn't be like that you are doing it, you are nervous, and the one who is watching you is even more nervous than you are. It shouldn't look like that, okay? And it should not be a bloody mess everywhere either. So like by the time you get to the papilla, you see a blood everywhere, it shouldn't be like that. So make it uh, 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 look beautiful. Here, what I usually, like if I'm, when a fellow is going with me, if he doesn't stop uh, at the papilla and doesn't freeze it, or doesn't look at the papilla for 30 seconds, I would not let him carry it. Okay. So I need to know, like what he needs to tell me, or she needs to tell me what's the plan. What is gonna be that angle? What is gonna be the axis? Where do you think like the bile duct direction is? Like just close your eyes, take a look at it, just think about that, okay? This is what it looks like. If I go in this angle, at least that looks like this the angle of the bile duct right here. 
when you look at that, to me, when I see this, I see a diverticulum there, I see this first fold there, I see a fold above that, and there's a small fold above that. To me, it looks like this should be the angle of the bile that's right there. You know what I'm trying to get at? So I will have that in mind before I touch it, and I will try to give my sphincterotoma wire that axis. So I'm just trying to imagine I'm inside the papilla, and this is the track I'm going to follow. So you may not be right 100% of the time, but trust me, you'll be right 80 to 90% of the time if you keep spending time on that. So just keep that in mind. It's just like here, you see that the, when we do a colonoscopy, we look at the appendix. Sometimes we don't see that either sickle valve. I'll give this example. So when you look at the appendix, it has that uh, crescent shape, okay? So you, if you don't know where the idiosecal valve is, you follow that crescent, <coughs> it will goes up, upwards, move the scope back, you will end up into the idiosecal valve. Same example. God didn't make the thing very complicated, okay? Same example is here in the papilla. If you know, don't know really what the angle of the bile duct is, there's gonna be a fold up there. It's gonna be that center, just like a crescent center of appendix, to get into the idiosecal well, apply the same concept here, and that will be the angle of the bile duct. So regarding the orifice, pancreatic orifice and biliary orifice. So yeah, here, so if, let's suppose, uh, uh, I bring the uh, bilby orifice at 12 o'clock position. So here, if I, this is the angle of the bile duct, right there, this is what I think is the angle of the bile duct because I can imagine I go in here and I have to take an angle there and go this way towards the bile, okay? So if I bring this angle, like angle this way, then this portion, let's suppose this is at uh, 12 o'clock, let's suppose 12 o'clock position. So pancreatic orifice usually would be between two and three o'clock position. So I would just switch the shape of the papilla to get that straight. The way I will do that is, moving the small wheel towards me. When I move the small wheel towards me, this axis, this angle will be in this area. And then that angle becomes a pancreatic angle for me. So it had to do a selective calculation. So every time I have to do it, if you just have to flip it by uh, three degrees, uh, I shouldn't say three, it's uh, probably how much? Uh, I'm so weak in math. <laughs> so just like a, a one fold, you can say, uh, would be 60 degrees. Something like that. Anyway, so this is, if this is the position of the uh, bile duct, angle of the bile duct, this would be the angle of the pancreatic duct. If I bring this here, if I change the position of that papilla, so that's how it would be. And, uh, uh, if I'm trying to uh, get a, I make a plan, if I have to do a pancreatic uh, uh, PRCP uh, for any pancreatic reason, recurrent pancreatitis, so I choose my instruments accordingly. And sometimes, sometimes what I do is, like, I don't know which syntotone you have. It's a Boston or Hook or which one is it? Or Columbus, which one do you guys use? Usually Boston. 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 Okay. So in my unit, there are two types. One is Boston and uh, one is uh, uh, Olympus. And when you go then, they go different ways. One goes this way, other goes that way. When you uh, refl uh, uh, flex them. So based on the shape of the papilla, sometimes I decide which syntotome I'm going to use, which way I need to go. But most of the time, 90% of the time, I use Boston. <coughs> and my colleagues, they use uh, uh, Olympus. Uh, on the first one, but uh, based on the shape and that the way it angles, you can choose that. And uh, choose uh, like a, 
don't think uh, like we have uh, every instrument or we use it like they, that they come for free. We have to be responsible for those as well, being in the USA there too. And uh, if I don't have to use two wires, I would not. Sometimes if I have to work on both pantras and the wire, and for the pantras I use 418 wire, that is really very floppy, very small wire, but I would not take another wire out to pantalate the wire if I can pantalate that pantalate. So you have to be uh, uh, conscious about that. So this papilla, now the cannulation. This is, a, this is, you see that? This is my favorite way of going. Not that this is uh, right uh, like for everybody. Uh, I use that as well. So, what is it? I use it as well. Yeah, you did. So I take a wire a little bit out. I call it a wire tip cannulation. So the earlier I mentioned about seeding, I'm gonna show that how to seed that in there by using a wire tip, okay? You see, I did move that a little bit this way and try to get that angle of the wire duct, okay? So now here, I use that wire tip to guide my sphincter tone into the orifice because there are so many folds, it's not going to be that easy the way it looks like. You're going to see that in a minute. Even though it went in very smoothly, no problem. Looks like I'm in the viaduct, but you will see what happens. Okay. So this is the one thing is the seeding or engaging the papilla. You can use the wire tip there to get yourself your sphincter tone in there or cannula in. Other ways, don't use the wire tip and just go straight in there with your cannula uh, or uh, with your sphincter tone. So here, after engaging in there, that it looks so easy. So I was like, we can put the wire through that, but the wire does not want to go in there. Okay. It's not going in there. And then I figured it out. This is an example of up and over papilla. You're going to see that in a and then I'll, I'll go back a little bit. Not the perfect example, but when you, uh, if I inject it, you will see that. So just, just pay attention to the injection that goes in. So the injection is going in, and then it's going like that. So it's because of uh, too many folds in there. So I was trying to push the wire in, but it would not go eventually, uh, like uh, it make the, took the uh, angle and uh, went in. And on top of that, you can see that the, uh, this is a stricture right there. It's supposed to liver transplant, but uh, uh, in USA, there's no living donor transplant. It's all uh, uh, and, uh, So th those are different than uh, what's done here. Okay. And th then this is a sphincterotomy. When you do the sphincterotomy, uh, don't uh, get self, uh, just uh, uh, you know, yourself into rush, take your time. Sometimes you have to cut a little bit, take a look, cut a little bit, and sometimes you have to adjust your sphincterotome and angle. Uh, if you take uh, like a minute to do a sphincterotomy, and that's, that's safer as compared to a 10 second sphincterotomy, I would go for, take a minute to do this sphincterotomy. It's the same patient. Just taking my time, uh, inflating or deflating, trying to, uh, I, at, some, at that point, I did have to change the angle a little bit. So now it's going a little bit that direction. I wanted it more in this direction. So after cutting that, uh, and also when you do a sphincterotomy, really sphincterotomy is cutting the sphincter. So cut the sphincter, okay? Mm -hmm. Don't do a half sphincterotomy. When you're going, like if it's a simple, straightforward case, do a full sphincterotomy. Sometimes you have to do a, like a, a you can't uh, cut it all, then you have to, we have decided not to talk about sphincteroplasty, but that's what uh, <coughs> you have to do sometimes. So you cut the sphincter completely. Usually, what is the limit of this sphincteroplasty? Yeah, this, this one is a little tricky. The limit is up to here, okay? but. After, it may not be much apparent here, after I joined the sphincterotomy, I looked at it and I 
I have had a complete sphincter, so I don't need to go beyond that. I can see the bile completely inside. Muscle is cut. Here, it looks like definitely not beyond that. It's somewhere in the center of that. So it's not much less one or two millimeters. But I looked at it, the sphincter was complete. So here, we have uh, three folds. One is left, right, and one is the middle. Yeah. So which one? You got the middle, middle one? the middle one. It's always got angle, same crescent. What is in the center? Follow that. And uh, when they have a periampullary diverticulum, these are the ones who actually bleed more because the wall becomes very thin as to, uh, when you get too close to the area of the uh, diverticulum, and that's where the blood vessel is. And those are the ones uh, they usually bleed. So you make a cut, you take a look. And uh, bleeding is usually another cut away, so we don't know which cut is that one. So take a look at it before you keep going, and when you have cut the sphincter, then stop there. So this is uh, another example of, uh, uh, you see that uh, normal anatomy, you see the pancreas right there, the pancreatic orifice, the orifice is on the top. Here they are not 100% uh, aberrant, but it's still kind of switched. The bile duct is uh, by the way, the uh, uh, pancreatic duct, uh, it, that angle, uh, pancreatic uh, duct angle should have been, and this is the pancreatic uh, angle, which should have been the bile duct. Okay. So here is an example of complete separate opening. You can see that? Like this is, there's no uh, connection between the pancreatic and the bile there's a normal tissue right in here. So there could be a two separate, complete separate openings. And then uh, obviously these uh, uh, periampullary uh, 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 diverticulum and ampulla either inside the uh, diverticulum or at the rim, or sometimes it's on the right, right other times it's on the left. So it really, uh, you have to sometimes even uh, uh, find it to see where it is. So this is a, a very simple story. Uh, sometimes diverticulum there makes your job much easier because it straightens the body and then it doesn't there are no angles on there so sometimes that's a, 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 having a diverticulum there uh, may be helpful you would see but most of my cannulations are going to be like that so not everybody does that way this is what I do I use a wire tape <laughs> and uh, to engage the papilla, and then over the wire tip, I'll get my uh, camera. So here, it's gonna be really straightforward. You see the opening right inside the ampulla, and as soon as the wire goes in, it just uh, takes it nicely, gently in there. No problem. This is O3-5? Wire is O3-5? I think it's O2-5, because that's what I usually, my techs know that's what I usually start with. So the only thing is like uh, with the O25, it's not, uh, uh, it's pretty good uh, wire for the artillery work as well, but at the same time, if I happen to go into the pancreas, at least it's not that worth the wire, uh, which I don't like for the pancreas. So I should usually start with O25. It's really good wire. This is uh, a uh, Viziglide wire. You heard about that? It's uh, made by Olympus. Yeah. Uh, I don't know which, you guys use uh, Boston wires? Which Usually one? Usually those mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Cook as well. Okay. So this is O25. But we, we use all, all sorts of wires, whatever you need. So. Now this one is going to be a little uh, more uh, challenging. You see that? It's a small uh, uh, ampulla. Not only angle is different. You usually, like, you cannot really cannulate this uh, 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 ampulla unless you are in a perfect position to get an angle. So take your time uh, to get that uh, into the right <coughs> position, into the right angle before you uh, start messing with it. And just minor adjustments, especially when you have uh, uh, an engaged it, and then uh, very gentle wire maneuvering, that also, uh, your tech, you need a really uh, sometimes uh, a good tech uh, who knows how to uh, move the wire, how to rotate the wire if you can uh, have a difficult cannulation. I think this is not to discuss 
third view that I'm showing you all those uh, very ancillary ones, but sometimes here, you see this knot trying to cannulate, trying to flip the opening outside, okay? Using a, a sphincter comb to move the cords outside. There's so many different ways to do that. Sometimes you can uh, uh, just uh, uh, connect this uh, cord to the other cord with a flip as needed. You don't have to do, do that much but you move the cord with your uh, sphincter comb or cannula to one side uh, to get an idea where the opening is and then uh, uh, try to engage that uh, uh, opening. Okay. You see that here? The opening is right underneath here. You see? Right here. After you know exactly where to touch it. I'm not touching the papilla yet until I know exactly where I'm going to put my first uh, wire cannula. And even when just gently even touching with the wire, it's kind of uh, deforming the papilla. So if I keep deforming it, I'm not going to get in. So I have to, here, I have to use the clips to move it out. You see that, how it's moving out? Just using clips on the cords so I can straighten the papilla. Because every time I go in there, it's not giving me any angle. So after uh, stabilizing that, then I get that. And still gently trying to maneuver back and forth until it takes it. You see, saw that still it didn't deform. I didn't let it deform because if I keep pushing on it, it's just like gonna flip to the other side again. And it's, uh, I won't be able And uh, this is an uh, other uh, ampulla, no way to get underneath that. So you're gonna see that uh, uh, I'm using uh, sphincter tone to bring that up, trying to deceive the papilla until it get, comes up straight here and then it's gonna, I'm gonna engage it. Most of those papillas are not like that. See that it's, the opening is facing downwards and trying to just engage. This is kind of have to use a, a hook technique because I can't, it's so far away, I can't even get my scope down there. You have to be gentle, have to be patient. Gently bringing it, straightening it, and until I'm uh, getting to the bottom. <coughs> you see a large stone in there, too. Right here. This is a, you have a lot of space in this one to do a spin cotton. Too many folds in there. How do you know that the, uh, the, the sprinkler told me that, that I have completely cut the sprinkler? You look at the sprinkler muscle. Mm -hmm. okay. So you get, a, after you do enough, you know exactly, that, uh, especially if you can uh, just, uh, uh, see that sprinkler muscle and you can see it cut, and that's your image. And sometimes you can even see the end of the bite at that point. So other times it's going to be like, Three, four folds, and just uh, sometimes when you do a ERCT, those who do ERCT, if you're still not getting an idea, you can't see the sphincter muscle, you can't, don't know exactly how many folds you have cut, and uh, initially when you're going and cutting it, it's going smoothly, smoothly. At one point, when you cut it, it's not going to cut. It's going to get you that kind of a warning that you are at the wall. Uh, like this wire, sphincter comb wire, does not cut the wall of the duodenum uh, same way as it cuts the sphincter uh, muscle. So there it will start, it will, be, it will be just a deeping, and you see a little bit uh, just whitening there to the tissue. And uh, that means you, you have, if you see that you have cut enough, that means stop it, don't do it. So it's giving more warm. So 
this is an uh, uh, other one. It's a, a pancreatic cancer patient after uh, uh, getting in engaging the patella. It's a little bit distortion. That's a here you if you see here, you see this is a dilated cut there, and then you really don't see much here. You see a little bit a trickle of uh, contrast there. So even though the wire is kind of uh, uh, folded, and when you push a folded wire, it's safe because the loop is not going to perforate through anything, and eventually it takes that turn and goes in there. It's just a little maneuvering there. Very, it was just a very trickle of contrast. You see that, like that's where the tumor was, and that's where the stricture was. But uh, you have to carefully uh, maneuver that. So this is uh, earlier I was trying to explain that that uh, uh, plastered septum of the septum and getting stuck there. So consider this something or like or, or ampulla. This is the pancreatic orifice right here. This is the biliary orifice. You don't realize that when you're doing that, uh, like you don't get the, uh, that idea. Uh, when you get there uh, to the ampulla, you see an opening. You put your cannula in there. First thing you did was like you went in here, you got the cannula there, and when you went in there, it went easily until you realized that it really was a pancreatic orifice. And then you do it again, do three times, four times. And every time you do, the sector moves a little up, little up, little up, until it's kind of a plastic to the filly orifice. Now you don't realize that. And you are just going to keep going into the pancreas itself. Okay? So for that, the way you do it, you use it. If you realize that that's what's happening, you look at the upper end of the ampulla, Use your wire tip, just the wire tip, and try to push that septum down until you get into the wire. Okay. I think uh, we're just going to talk about the standard technique, right? Okay. So I, I think I'll uh, just stop there and take uh, uh, questions uh, uh, about the cannulation, ampulla, and you will get a better idea when you do the cases. Uh, and, uh,
wire was not going. The wire wasn't going, and I was engaged. The hit was engaged. I knew I am in the orifice. I just didn't know the uh, angle which way it's going. To get that idea, and the wire wasn't going smoothly in there, and I was engaged in the middle of the opening. That's when I like I mean, okay, the queen kept it to get an idea what is the direction where you know which angle. Two words of caution. I'm sure you must have mentioned to you have a One, when you're engaging, you need to make sure that you are free when you're engaging. You don't want to be like Khalid was saying, you don't want to be trying to find a way or create a product and then inject it. What I generally do is I'll pull it a little bit out and then go back in a little bit just to see that I'm actually not impacted anywhere and I'm I'm more outside then I am inside, okay, as much as I can. And then I, it's a very, very slow injection. Small injection. A very small injection. As I said, our techs are, I, before we inject in such a situation, I tell them, you are only going to look at the amphibia, I'm only going to look at the floor. I'm actually looking at both. But I tell them to focus on the roof because they, as soon as you inject, you know that you will have some communication. So I think as long as you're not deeply engaged and you're not going through because you could be stuck with the wall or gone through it a little bit and then obviously the whole ampulla will become swollen mm -hmm. and that's a nightmare for anybody. Sir, so how do you know that position of the ampulla is uh, ideal to cannulate? I'm sure that's what he touched. Sorry. That's what the question. How do you how know? Do you, how do you know the position of the ampulla is ideal for cannulation? Or so what position of this? The position of ampulla on the screen. How do you know? Yeah.
nebula should be at a distance where you can see, and it should be very close. The closer the better. The more, the more control you want to have. How do you bring the ampulla close? How do you position yourself? All that, this is what we are going to do. Abhi Tachya Mahapur said, we are just talking about general things and just giving you an idea. But uh, from tomorrow morning, it's all going to be practical. So there is no very little theory at all. It's a cost. Sometimes actually cannulate or use an odd position to get it. Sometimes you have to use what we call long loop position. Okay, because short loop position is not giving you the, the access or the right uh, uh, you know, position as well as the direction. Uh, Further away from ampulla you're going to go, the more difficult you're making your position. No, your wire and the ampulla. Near. It's, it's it should be, uh, to me, as you know, it should be as near as possible. Sensible. Obviously, if it's too close, you'll not be able to see. But if it's just at a distance where your wire and your cannula can be guided into the bile duct or the pancreas, it's that the position. But you will learn with experience that you know you don't think about uh, you won't have to think about this thing. These things will come naturally. Yeah. But what you don't want to do is have the ampulla too far and trying to cannulate where your wire is coming out like this and you're poking, yeah. trying to get in. That's not good. Okay, that's making yourself making your procedure difficult and sometimes not cannulate. <laughs> So this is a mannequin, okay? So yet yeah, this is not going to give you the real thing. The idea is not here to to get. The idea here is to understand how do you reach the ampulla and how what are the options you have to bring the ampulla close to you, away from you. That is very important when you're cannulating, but it becomes more important when you're putting stents and all that. Okay. So. During, during the next three days, we'll show you why so often your picture changes and your boss comes and just does nothing and the ampulla is right there. Okay? Because some of the movements that you are movements that you are doing while you're doing ERCT, you don't realize. Okay? Whereas we understand. So immediately we take the scope, we know what you've done, so we just you're standing here, and I just stand here, and the ampulla is back. Yes. And I give it back to you, you go like this, the ampulla is gone here. So you don't realize. Those are the things that we try and teach you during the trip. Okay? So this is, uh, this, isme, isko karne mein there are no marks. Okay? Because this is not real. 